Hello everyone, today I'm going to try to play with uh, multiple point tractors. I have this uh, video on my channel that I posted a few days ago. It's, it was the first time I tried it and it, I think the experiment was quite interesting. I did a video that explains the formulas. Today I'm just going to play again with it and try to create something different from this experiment. I saw this tweet from Chapman Taylor where they show this uh, NOI tech park and uh, I was looking at the building and I, I thought, oh, it's an interesting facade, maybe I could do something with it and uh, it has some variation to it but I was trying to use my multiple attractor point so maybe create a different kind of variation from that one so quickly created just a mass I placed this one family that repeats itself and now I was thinking how I would want these panels to vary so I started sketching here thinking that the, maybe these panels could uh, vary between quite shut for less exposure to more open so I was thinking that these so these would vary between the open and close still not sure how it's gonna vary if it's just gonna stretch but we'll look into that later for now, I was pondering like my grid, how it's going to work. So if I cancel out of this before, so if I look here and think how would I want my grid to be, right now it's divided in two per story, uh, but if I come here and I think what I want to repeat is this from here down to here. So if I think that this is my panel, I know that my panel will have constant 4 meters, so in this case it will help if our adaptive family act is to scale because help us to know where we want things to be because I thought that the minimum that this panel would be would be the thickness of the slot so there are a few positions that we want to stick to so I'll think that if I take midpoint here this is where one of the panels will be and that's where the other one will be obviously this, this could change but we'll look at that when we're creating the family. Maybe this could vary between the window sill height and to, the, well, the same distance below. So I know that this panel will vary between 2.3 meters and 300 mil, and this one, uh, it would vary between 1.5 and 30. So this fixed point for now, it has a distance from the beginning of my family and this one the same thing I want to remember these positions so let's go with this for now and we'll start creating our, our family so if I go into a new family and I pick my metric generic adaptive it can't be pattern based because we're gonna use the point tractor so we need to make it this way and since we have measurements it's useful if this time we try to keep things to scale. So I'm going to place a point and we have our four points. So let's make them adaptive. Let's create the structure of our panel. Select them all and let's make them reference line. See that we have what we the four meters that we want and let's place things on the same. And I want one point here and here this might maybe the center of our panels. Same on the other side. So if we see the normalized curve parameter, it's closer to 1. So it means that's uh, starting from here. That's the start, that's the end. This one, the same thing. So, so what we're going to do is take the, all the four points and say that we want a segment length. So now it's measuring from here. And these are the dimensions that I want. So this will be top panel, at least the higher one. So I'm going to give it a parameter. Top panel. That other one is going to be top panel. Well, I could have changed this before to what we want. It's 150 mil. Bot panel. And this will be the same. So I'm just going to change the top panel to the actual 
so this will be the position of our panels if later we want these parameters to go up and down we we can make it uh, but for now it works so now our extrusions we have to have extrusions here so what i'm going to do is create a new family new family again generic model adaptive so i'll place two points make them adaptive and because we want this to be the center we're going to have to host our extrusion here so we can make a reference line so what we're going to do is set the work plane to be the vertical one since our facade is always vertical uh, it just makes it easier and we're going to draw a rectangular here we need to align these to the points so that they always stay there and we need to make sure that this is always centered so put the equal here and uh, to make sure that we control the extrusion better we're going to make these reference lines before we create form of course this would be useful to have a parameter for the extrusion so I'm just going to call it extrusion so great maybe one other thing is give it a material parameter so now that we have our panel we're gonna load into our family we can save and we can play we can place the other one there too. Just testing what happens if it's twisted. The other thing is pass these parameters to this family. So we need the panel extrusion. Just call it extrusion. Well, we did forget about one important thing. The parameter that we want to change actually. So we're going to add the parameter called width. back into the family and we can save again so now I'm going to assign the parameters I'm going to select this first one and give it a top width and the bottom one bot width so now we have a top width that will vary have a bottom width that will vary as well separately so now we need a porting parameter we need something that will measure a distance to the other surface and will report back to transform the width so what we need is our fifth point that will be our point tractor the other video as well that i did about the multiple point attractors uh, but let's decide what's the distance at what distance from one surface to the other if we have our facade here and another undulating surface there when does it start to change it so let's give it a distance that we remember so this is 5000 so okay let's think between 5000 and 10000 perhaps we do need a line a reference line where we place a dimension and we call it our reporting parameter so this is our length and we have to remember to take a reporting parameter because this is not changed by us this is red only so now let's go to our panels that will change and think about how do we want them to change so if you remember from our elevation track for instance the top panel can never exceed the 2.3 meters and can never be less than 30 and the other one can never be above 1.5 and less than 30 so what I'll do here is create reference points just with the distance that we, we mentioned so 5 meters 
and 10 meters. So our surface should undulate between these distances. So I'm going to name these just for convenience. And I'm going to go to an elevation and I'm going to draw my surfaces here. So I'll set, I'm going to define the reference plane. So if I come to create a reference line, let's make it reference and use the spline through point and make sure this draw on work plane is ticked. And now this is just about placing a few points and copying these lines across. And if we go in 3D, we can just select these all these reference lines and create form. We what we're going to do is place our, our adaptive panel family in the surface here. And uh, we're going to put uh, the fifth point that is going to measure the distance in this surface here. So we want these two surfaces to be modeled in the same way so that they have the same direction. So that they start and end, their start and end point when we do divide face will be in the same place. If we say beginning and end, the best way is that we copy this, the, all these lines that we just created instead of using this one. So, but before we copy this, let's just divide the grid the way we want it. So let's say a fixed number 20. That doesn't matter, but fixed distance. Let's say the four meters. And we shall say that it will start always one meter above. So we can select this divided face and come here to this little arrow, turn the nodes on, and we have the face divided the way we want. I'm just going to copy it. Great, we have both surfaces now. All we'll do later is just manipulate this surface here with the undulation that we want to make the panels change. But for now, let's go back to our panel and let's create the formulas. So I had this uh, presentation from the other video. I explained how this uh, panel would change would open and close and change an offset. And now we do use a length reporting parameter to change the normalized curve parameter that opens and closes the panel. So it's the same principle as now. We have a length, a distance that we want to measure, this reporting parameter, and we have a parameter that we want to define. That in this last case was a normalized curve parameter and then in the, on a second time, we did it with a, an offset parameter. In our case now, it will be the width of the panels. So I'll jump back to Revit just to try to be clear. So this is our reporting parameter that we're changing is this width here for both of them. And like we saw, because we have two different dimensions for this, these two elements have a different maximum width. We'll need two formulas, but the formula will be the same. If I go back to my point, we what we'll have to do is we're going to use the same the same formula and just replace it with our new values. So a reminder, what we did is take this number here, divide it by that one, and we'd get a number. This number would use in the formula a the the number that we want to find out will be equal to the reporting parameter that we have divided by the result of that. So let's move ahead and replace it with our numbers. So what we said is that our width would be 300, the minimum, and 1500 the maximum in one of the panels. And our reporting parameter would give us values between 5 and 10 meters. So we will do the same thing as before. So we need the total of the range, that in this case will be 10 minus 5 meters, and we divide it by the range from this side. So it's 1500 minus 300. And that will give us 4.167. 4 so actually, this is what would happen with minus 300 would be equal to that formula. Because we, wanna, we have to get rid of this 300 from here, 
we moved to this side. So the, it's simple math really. Just have to get your head around it. Uh, so this is our formula. So L is the name of our parameter. So L minus 5000 divided by 4.167 plus 300 is the formula to get the result that we want. But then we have another uh, point in the last video. We have a addition. So what happens when it's under 5000 and wh what happens when it's above 10,000? So this is what we're going to do. Again, we're saying if our length, if our length here is above 10,000, what will happen is this will always stay at the top with 1500. So if true 1500, if our length is below 5,000, it will always have to be 300. So if true, it will always have to be 300. If not, the second argument, then our formula will apply. Of course, we will have to do the same for the other panel, that uh, instead of 1500 was 2300. So these, these are the two formulas that we need. We just copy the formulas the same. So I come to the project, I open my properties here, and I'll just paste the formulas that we do. Okay, there you go. All should work fine now. So if I load my family into the go to a 3D view, and let's so repeat. All seem to have worked fine now. Now what we're we going to do, select these points that define surface and we can move them. Because I selected more than one, I'll use the move command like this. Or you can just drag one by one. And we can see the panels changing. From now on it's pretty simple. It's just that you play around with the second surface as much as you like until you get the result that you, you're looking for. An interesting way to work. Uh, with, uh, add more parameters or a more automated way using formulas uh, instead of man manually move things but uh, this is quite simple I believe if you follow along in the video you can I believe you can replicate this and then just manipulate your your surface as you wish to, to achieve completely different results so thank you for watching and see you next time